across the rugged terrain of Colorado and Wyoming, ten unlikely riders pursue an elusive mountaintop destination called Phantom Lake. Among them are a single grad student. It's just me and Alexa. Alexa can't give me a hug. A photographer and tinkerer. This is pretty sweet. If you don't have a pair of these, you need to get them. An adventure-starved accountant. I'm domesticated. I need an adventure, please. A second career jazz singer. This really is real. This is really happening. A college student. This is my valid motorcycle's license. A multi-business entrepreneur. As far as my off-roading experience, there's a first time for everything. Take that, Rockies! A semi-retired lobbyist. You gotta keep that smile. Oh, yeah! A quiet engineer. Hopefully I'll make some more close friends on this trip coming. And a diligent young father. I have a fear of heights. I overcome that fear. Long-time pastor, adventurer, and father figure Brian Tome will lead the way. Jesus tells a story about God. He says what God does to make it to the end, they must overcome mental fatigue, physical fatigue, and even the landscape itself. Will these writers have the determination, stamina, and courage to make it to the end? I wake up every day and I say to God, God, whatever you got going on today, I want to be a part of it. We're going to do something really unorthodox taking inexperienced riders on this trip. You gotta be in a situation that's foreign to what you're used to. New riders are going to be challenged. I have this feeling that everyone has an adventure that they're on. I wanna see real people in the real world with real life adventures learn how to conquer them. That's why I wanna do this trip with people who need it. We're not in a difficult position. We don't grow the way we could grow. I learn when things are difficult. I learn when I get smacked in the mouth. I learn when I fall down. I don't want to fail because I didn't try hard enough. Some people would say, well, you're a pastor. Shouldn't you just be doing Bible studies? I'm about making real men and women stronger, and this is a way that I found that does it. Previously on Phantom Lake, what should be an easy start turns into a cluster really fast. I'm about to lose my freaking mind. My question is, one, do you tow? Two, can you come pick this bike up and get me going quickly? I've been doing these trips for a long time with a lot of people and never, never, never has there been a bike that's gone down the first day, let alone three, and not the first day, we're, we're, we're 50 miles in. We literally stopped on the interstate. We had to stop because we stalled a, a motorcycle. We're talking about our life. So that, that's the burden I'm bearing right now. And I'm considering having you not ride anymore because I'm afraid of you for your health. I feel amazing. This is God's country right here. This is amazing. We rode all day. We had all kinds of stuff happen yesterday with bikes. At least twice we got separated into different groups. One of them was my fault. <laughs> Sorry. I came over the pass yesterday and I was, it like it made me cry. It was so beautiful. I came to Colorado to ride a motorcycle. I'm just walking around a strange town. Great morning, we're gonna ride uh, about 200 miles today to um, tell you ride, and then I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll find out. Okay, I'll see you, in, in, uh, see you tomorrow or tonight. I'll do it again tonight. Okay, bye. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Hope you guys have a good ride today. Our goal today is to get to tell you ride. We're a day behind, but if everyone rides well, we'll pick that up over the course of our journey. I think the big thing I want to get, want us to try to improve on today is speed. Never be the person everyone else is waiting for. So make sure you got your water, make sure you have your bike packed up. If I say we're going to be leaving at, you know, 8.30, make sure you're ready. You're ready on your bike, you're waiting for us there. I'm going to arrange us in order with the slower people behind me. And if you're falling back, we're gonna have to talk about that. 
Sarah and I are going to uh, going to take a ride. I was in the front yesterday and I couldn't see all the stuff that was happening, you know, behind. Sarah and I have talked about this. I just want to fill everybody in so, so you all know. So I want to kind of just see with my own eyes how she's riding, what that looks like. I'm concerned about her safety. I want everybody to get to Phantom Lake. I believe, we believe when we came into this, everybody could get to Phantom Lake, but I also have a responsibility to make sure no one is, is going to get unnecessarily hurt, or I might even say killed. We're gonna go out and just kind of ride together. I'm gonna to see where she is skill-wise, and, and then we'll, um, we'll take it from there, okay? I think everyone can make it to Phantom Lake, but there's a big distance between can and will. Oh, should I turn on this thing? There was about a week after finding out that I was going on the trip where I was like, is this stupid? Like, like could I die on this trip? God has brought me to a place where I, he was like, I don't believe that he would have me go on this trip to, to die. I feel like there's there's a reason that I'm here and I feel like his protection will be there. It doesn't take long for me to see with my own eyes that Sarah's run is about done. She has a hard time starting her bike. She passes me inside of the same lane. She's having a hard time making basic turns and she's stalling out her bike and I can hear her in her microphone sobbing as we're trying to get back to the hotel. I'm just, I care for you too much. I care for your future. I just, I can't put you in arms away. I know. I, I know. I don't know how much of it is stuff that's in your head. I don't know how much of it is you're used to a scooter. I don't know how much of it is the training we put you through wasn't true to this. I don't know how much of it is. I, 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 all I know is what I experienced there I can't, I can't, you're, I, I care for you too much. Can't do it, all right? I knew the day hadn't gone super well with riding because I stalled on the highway in the middle of traffic three times. I don't know, I didn't think it was enough that, that my riding would become a big concern to everybody. So then Brian told me I wasn't riding anymore and that was it. Sarah is out. I made the decision, being with her, that um, she's just not in a good place to be able to do this. And it's just, it's just the right call, it's the right call. So she's out, she's gonna stay with us. Uh, Thomas is gonna take her bike instead of us having to rent something else. We're gonna leave the rental bike here that broke down. Sarah's gonna ride in the truck and she's gonna finish this trip with us. You can see there's a lot of unpredictable stuff that's happening. Any of us at any moment, our trip could end for whatever reason, bike goes down or, or whatever. You are a good, riding good. I, I, I feel really, really good about this crew for today. I hope you do too. I think, I think it's gonna be a, a totally different day. We've got our heads in the right space. We've got the right crew for today. And it's gonna be a great day, all right? All right, anything else? Awesome, let's mount up. Sarah was just informed that she wasn't gonna be able to uh, ride the rest of the trail, which is a serious bummer. Sarah is awesome. Um, she's super funny, super cool. I'm now going to get on her bike, and uh, that'll be my rider, God willing, fingers crossed, for the rest of the trip. It's, it's really, it's really comforting seeing how you're riding. You're riding really, really great.
One rider's out, one is on his way back. I'm excited for David coming in, but I'm not excited that his bike is running and the dealer couldn't figure out why it wasn't running before. In my history, bikes don't just start running again. They're going to break unless you fix something. I just want you guys to see what I'm about to ride into. This is separating me from my group, but I'm going for it. This will be the most physically rigorous thing I've ever done in my life for this kind of a duration. You don't get to go home at the end of the day and sleep in your nice comfy bed and hang out in your recliner or take a hot bath or, you know, it's gonna be rigorous. You are riding the heck out of that 250 Thank now. You. I'm thinking about how I feel on 800. <laughs> you are riding the heck out of that 250, Patty. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Run. That's my Wow. Way. I'm already trying to get my mind right to push through that, those limits I'm gonna hit, my personal, you know, fatigue or whatever happens. I'm trying to get my mind right to just go, mm -mm. we're gonna suck it up, buttercup, because there's nowhere to go, so let's do it. Patty was like this. She's got like a sport, <laughs> like enduro riding, you know, she's like, because <laughs> that is no joke. So you're the only woman right now. You, you, you feeling okay? Oh yeah. All right. Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit right now, we pray. Jesus, Jesus, we call on you, Jesus, right now, we call on you. Jesus, we call on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call on you right now. She's breathing, right? Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We call on you, Jesus, right now. Father, we pray for your life, for your power, for your healing grace to be right here. In the
I've never had this much just weird stuff happen. It's really, really, really weird. It felt like a movie. I kept seeing them tight turns. So I kept saying, tight turns, guys, tight turns. It just happened so fast. She was lifeless when we first, when I first came around that corner and saw, saw a bike down and Patty twisted up next to I thought, it. I thought, I thought she was just dead, dead or, or broken neck. I didn't see anything. I just thought, done. And at that point, we had the medic there and I'm just, I'm walking slow. I don't even know if I want to go up. So I'm like, I don't think I can do anything here. Seeing how she fell, it could have easily been a different story. That was just not good to see that, you know. My nephew was killed on the bike. Yeah. I'm ashamed at my first, my, my reaction, my first five seconds. I like, I was afraid to go up. You were like, you were on it like that, man. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it was just like park the bike and run, you know? Yeah. I think there was just a piece that, that God just gave me that said, she's going to be okay. And, and my role here is just to help encourage her, hold her hand, and, and tell her she's going to be okay. You did a great job with that. Seriously, great job. I think that moment has, has stuck with me, you know? And, and I'm, you know, I'm probably still a little emotional about that. I, I'm equally as emotional just about the process afterwards of seeing her hands start moving, seeing her legs start moving. When we approached, I didn't know who it was who went down, and I was like, oh, like, who is it? And then I also had the thought of like, I'm glad I wasn't riding. That was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen, and I was pretty sure she was dead like everybody else. Where I thought I was being cautious before, I feel like I have to be 10 times more cautious. I'm not gonna let anyone dry, ride this trip scared. I've been, I've been to that rodeo. That's not, that's not being, that's not being a dick. that's just, I've, I've, I've been down the road and I just want the best for you guys and, and the whole group. Can I grab you for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, here, so here are my thoughts. Maybe it's my fault, maybe it's just a dynamic of a relationship, but I feel like I've been pegged as a liability. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just, you know, kind of in driving, you know. It is your fault because you've not been pegged that way. Okay, yeah, and, and this is how I it feel often. Fault. But I guess I feel like, you know, you're, 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 yeah. you're talking to me as a potential person who might not be successful in this. I, I sure that was emotional for me, you know, yeah, that, was, that yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Um, but I'm ready to go. I'm ready to haul ass. And you are not a liability. Us. I never saw you as a liability. Okay, You've done you. a great job the whole time. I don't want to go through the rest of this trip feeling like Brian's thinking, Thomas shouldn't be here. Thomas needs to go home. Mm -hmm. Thomas is holding us all back. And, um, I don't know. That's where I am right now. Whatever thing you got going in the back of your mind, that cool. Brian's thinking this about me or that, it's not true. Awesome. It's not true. Yeah, Dude, that means a lot to me. You're doing great. It does. You're stuck. All right, cool. All right. Yep, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I know I can do this. I absolutely can. I just, I don't want that, that spirit of fear to, to plug itself into me here and there and, and tell me that I can't. So I'm just checking in. Um, it's the night of the most awesome ride I had today. I just am still blown away by the beauty I saw and how much I enjoyed the ride today. Um, but then I took a spill uh, and uh, so now I'm uh, just riding out the pain um, but I am still here so I know there's more there's more to come welcome to the worst day of riding I've ever had in my life honestly I've never had a worse day a more stressful day a more potentially tragic day a later day trying to find a campsite. Awful. Awful. I got 
seven guys here who are on the verge of not something good. I can't find a campsite or place to pitch my tent at all. We need to find a campsite. We need to find something that's near water or has a view or has access to firewood or any place where we're simply allowed to pitch a tent. Tonight, we're finding none of it. Guys, we're turning right at the bottom of the hill. find a place on the side of the road. I'm not even sure if it's legal, but I know for sure someone's about to get hurt really bad, so we take it. It's been a hard day, hard, long day between Patty falling, um, 45 miles an hour on pavement. I was right behind her, and um, for a moment, I thought she died. But I'm telling you, <sighs> Jesus spared her life. She just has some scrapes and bruises. I'm just so thankful for that. I mean, we had a really long day of riding that ended with struggling to find a campsite. Yet in the midst of all that, and our team taking all kinds of hits, we're down two riders now, and I'm tired. <laughs> I feel like tomorrow's gonna be the biggest challenge for me. Tomorrow we hit the passes, Ophir Pass being the first. It's high, it's, uh, right now or than my taste and, uh, and I'm going to do it. David rejoins the group after 10 hours of oh, riding solo. Man. Oh, that was, uh, that was awesome. Yes! What's up, brother? Wow. Yeah. Welcome back, man. Oh. <laughs> Me? Is that eight hours? Nine. We could all use a trip, Captain. Get Brian's unfiltered encouragement and challenge straight to your inbox. Subscribe at briantome.com.